it. So it's 7.30 in the morning and we're leaving our guest, our guest house of our last day in Seoul. And we're headed to the airport and our flight leaves at 10.30 and we land in Japan at 12.30 or something. And this is, um, this is monumental for us. Somebody actually will be at the airport to pick us up, apparently. We'll see. <laughs> um, a, f a friend of mine from a webpage that um, I've been a member of for a long time lives in Japan. And he has indicated he's going to pick us up and hopefully doesn't take us to his lair and kill us. He looks like a normal guy, so I think we're in good shape. But if this is the last video you ever get from us, hunt down Brian Starkey. Name is Brian Starkey. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. He's trusting us in his place. I think I think we'll be all right. So it's 9.53 in the morning. Our plane boards in two or three minutes. And this is my breakfast. <laughs> Another case of airport stupidity. I wasn't allowed to bring my bottle of water on an airplane, but they gave in me, they've given us weapons on the plane. <laughs> and these are like heavy. They're like real, like sharp. Like you could definitely take out somebody's eye. Here, give me your eye. <laughs> Happy snacking. Snacks. <laughs> this is monumental. Oh my god. Oh, wow. You got the Jordan almonds. Oh, my teeth are gonna break. <laughs> I don't even know what this is. What is this? It's like candy rocks or whatever. These are your new pentas. <laughs> Ooh, I bet you're happy about that. Yeah, I bet you're happy about that. I'm happy about this. I saw these, I they had a, like a vending machine at that place that we went to that had like little beef jerky oh, yeah, sticks, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're not happy about that. <laughs> but you will be happy about this. <laughs> I feel like Christmas. I'll, I'll keep this to myself. <laughs> the panties. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so we're in like an international information center. And it's kind of like a library a little bit. But they have this bulletin board. And... Um, these things are, like, you can come here and post this piece of paper and write your information. And it's like looking for friends. And then people come and they can tear off, you know, the part with your name and your email address. And then you become friends. It's kind of like Craigslist for friends in real life. It's a little peculiar. <laughs> but it seems that most people are using it for um, meeting people that can speak other languages. So they can help communicate and, like, learn. These people are looking to learn Thai. And this one says Italy, and most of them say English, but it's kind of interesting. <laughs> kind of weird at the same time. <laughs> Alright, this looks like just a bundle of sticks sitting here, but it was just moving a few seconds ago. There's actually a bug inside that looks like a caterpillar. Oh, it's moving. Um, I, I don't know how it's put all these sticks together and glued them so that it looks like a cocoon, like he might be making his cocoon. It's really, really strange. He's built like a little tube that he lives in and it's not attached to the wall, like his legs are holding the wall and he can still move his tube around. It's really strange. I've never seen anything like this and I mean, I don't know how he's done this. This is one magical, magical bug. So because space can be limited in cities, this is how they park cars. They put them in elevators. And this thing obviously moves this way and this way and up and down so that you can get all the cars out. And one just like went in this way and I guess it'll move out and then the car will pull out. All of the gas pumps just kind of, you know, hang from the ceiling. So in some countries, we've seen gas 
in a water jug and you buy it on a little stand from a person who lives in a hut. And here, gas comes from the heavens. We've come into an arcade that is uh, called Namco Land, I think. And Eric has found this really weird Tetris game with these globes on it. And uh, he's going to figure out how to play. And that was weird. That monkey seems really uninterested. <laughs> We saw something similar to this in Hong Kong, but this is a little more um, expansive. It's a horse racing, gambling type of video game. This kid is just chilling over here, smoking him a cigarette, <laughs> gambling on some ponies. <laughs> we spent the day bicycling around Sendai, just kind of wandering around. We um, rode around to a park and then went to a McDonald's because there was no other food that was open because it was pretty early in the morning. Then got lost and went to a couple of video game arcades. That was pretty fun. And then we miraculously have made our way back to the neighborhood where, uh, where we're staying and we're really surprised we actually found it. So we won't be sleeping on the street tonight. <laughs> Something I've really enjoyed about being in Asia is going into video bar yeah, video game arcades. They're really lively and they're just, they're just interesting. And I mean, I'm a dork, so you know that fulfills that need. And um, they don't exist in the United States as this facet, at least not uh, maybe in like New York or something. But I mean, it's just that kind of something that has died in the States and to see it continue to live on with the way that the video games have progressed is a really, really cool. Uh, really cool thing to see, and it's been in a lot of countries we've been to, so um, it was a good time. Uh, but you see some weird things, especially here in Japan. Like this is called this is called Music Gun Gun. So it's like a cross between a like a like a on rail shooter and a music game. <laughs> it's like really cute. It's just really weird to cross such things with. <laughs> Just violence and cuteness is a weird combination. Brian's in a band with uh, some Japanese fellows and the name of the band is Come On Feel. And I had the opportunity to go and see them practice one night while we were staying with the Starkeys in Sendai. And it was interesting to see how the band, it's common for bands, they do not own amplifiers and they do not own a drum set. And the reason behind that is because you don't have any place to play because the houses are so close together that you just annoy your neighbors. So this is practice spaces and this one is down like in a basement of a building in central Sendai. And um, you know you, they go in there and the amps and the drums are supplied for uh, all the bands and they just have practice space for an hour or whatever and pay for the hour and then they're on their way. And uh, when a band plays a show, that uh, the, the venue supplies the amplification and the drum set. So it's interesting to see that nobody has to really move any equipment in this country, and that makes being in a band much nicer, except for the cost of renting a place to play. That's a lot of taxis.